the, the bio that you sent me, it mentions uh, one of your first introductions to music was uh, your cousin's record collection that was handed down to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what will we have found in that collection? You know, not, I'm sad to say, not all cool things, <laughs> but I like them anyway. I'll tell you the really uncool things were things like, um, Billy, Don't Be a Hero. Do you remember that song? Oh, sure do. <laughs> it was just like way before my time, but, uh, what else? The Night Chicago Died by Paper Lace. Yeah. And, uh, just some really bad things, but also, you know, good things like that you would probably expect, like Monkey's Records or Beatles mm. Records and things like that. A bit of trash but and a bit. I, I also had a, I also had a Vicky Lawrence record in there, which is pretty good. <laughs> so some trash, some treasure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when did songwriting become a creative outlet for you? Um, I actually didn't start writing until I was in, I think, like in college. I um, before that, I I always played guitar, but I never wrote my own songs until uh, until college. So. Not for a while. Among the the songwriters that that inspired you to write, was there a universal quality amongst them all that you can that you can pinpoint? Um, I don't think I was ever trying to be like anyone else. So I don't know. I mean, I just I think I'm more of a fan of music. So I probably you know like everybody sort of unconsciously just it's all mixed up in there. You know, like I'm yeah. a huge fan. I'm one of those people with. Tons of records and CDs, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the area that you're originally from, Hudson. Um, it's a a sort of small New England town um, that is often featured in calendars and things around these parts. So it's during the fall, the you know leaves turns all sorts of colors, and they have pumpkins and apples, and people uh, drive around and look at the leaves. And uh, but it's a very small town, so. So my whole life, I probably went to school with like 80 people. Just kind of weird these days. <laughs> yeah. Do you get back there at all these days? Um, for holidays and things like that. So. Yeah. Now, you, when you left there, you headed for, for Boston originally. W- was music a career option for you at this stage? No, I uh, went to college and studied philosophy, which is very, you know, useful. I made a ton of money as a philosopher and no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> so no I went I did go to school I studied philosophy and then I was in a, a bunch of like lo- you know rock bands yep. that weren't very good um, in college one was uh, the English Muffins <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get very far maybe it was our name now there was a band that you were involved with I hope I get this pronounced and pronunciation right is it pie Wacket? that's right yeah tell us about them yeah. that got a bit further uh <laughs> <laughs> that was um it was like an indie pop band and we played out around boston and then we um did, sort of did this weirdo thing with irs records where i don't want to say it was a record deal because the record never came out because they went bankrupt but uh we recorded a record with them and um, which we ended up self-releasing because the label, you know, never it it didn't exist anymore. But it was it was a fun band, and we um, we toured around and played some festivals in L.A. and New York, and it was fun. It was a little pop trio. Now you were writing this band. Were you taking a, a different approach to your songwriting then as what you do now with, with your own material? Um, it was a bit more quirky, I would say. You, you know, it was a this. I think this new record is a bit, it's still obviously very poppy, but it's got a little bit more singer-songwriter thing going on. Um, I was a songwriter, the only whatever singer-songwriter in, in that band, but I think it was a bit more indie pop, you know, wacky stuff. <laughs> now, you're based in Brooklyn now. What what prompted you move there? Um, I don't know. It was just like one of those times where all my friends moved to different cities, you know, sort of at the same time, and I think I moved to New York after watching, like, too many Woody Allen movies or something, and <laughs> thought it would be great and romantic, and, uh, but instead I moved to Brooklyn, <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it a lot, actually, so. <laughs> now, let's talk about this debut album, which has been out for a while now, but it's a wonderful piece of work. Um, 
Do the songs on the album, I know there are quite a few you've, you've co-written, but uh, the ones of your own, are they songs that um, come from a stockpile of material that you, that you had already in hand, or were they written with the album in mind? Um, you know, they were actually all written with the album in mind. Um, there was a whole, you know, there was a backlog of, you know, songs I'd written for the band, but they just didn't seem right without the whole band, you know? So I just kind of, when I moved to New York, I started just from scratch and, um, sort of changed my, what I was writing about in the process. Now, the album was, was produced by, by Jill Sobule, a, a fine singer-songwriter herself. Did you specifically want the album produced by someone who was a musician? Um, no, what happened actually is when I was still living in Boston and in the, in the band Piwacket, we kept opening for Jill, like once in Boston, I think once in New York, and once in L.A., just coincidentally. And then we, Jill and I started hanging out together because she's very funny and we're both kind of goofy and have a similar sense of humor. And um, we just started writing together, writing songs together. Um, I think the first one we wrote was Another Saturday off the record. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I kind of convinced her to produce the record. I kind of twisted her arm, like, come on, you know, it'll be fun. (laughs) (laughs) Many of the reviews of the album and many many people reviewing your music have mentioned a, a 60s influence in your work. Are you comfortable with those? Those comparisons? Um, yeah, I mean, I love 60s pop music. You know, I love the whole um, sort of singer-songwriter thing that was mixed with, you know, Tin Pin Alley or Brill Building Pop. You know, I like that era where there was it wasn't just confessional meanderings. You know, there was still some, like, fun and craft involved. So I mm-hmm. definitely don't mind that. The reviews for the album, one thing they've all got in common, they've been uh, glowing in, in their praise of, of the album. Has it been hard to keep a level head through all this universal praise? <laughs> <laughs> it's been very easy to keep a level head. <laughs> this is like a little self-released record. So, I mean, it was, um, it's nice. It was a nice um, thing that anyone even noticed it. You know, I mean, it was nice that it got nice reviews and it sort of uh, eases the pain of my monthly visa bill payment, which funded... <laughs> <laughs> With the benefit of hindsight behind you now, would there be anything about the album that you would do differently if you had to go around again? Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, I think you always feel that way. Like, um, but in another way, I always it's just also just like a sort of snapshot of like where you were. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, I probably would, but on the other hand, I wouldn't. You know. It'll just be a different record, you know. It'll be my next record. <laughs> <laughs> Have all these great reviews put a bit of pressure on you now? Do you feel like with the, the next CD you've got something to, to live up to? I I actually do, but I don't know why. I mean, because it's not like you know, like I said, that it was it was just a small little record. But I I I want it to be, you know. I hope that it's even better. You know, I think I hope that. I don't know, everyone probably is like that, right? They hope that the next thing they do is better. So. Yeah. Whatever that means, better. <laughs> at, at what stage is the next record? It's actually all written, and um, though I want to try to get it in a few more. I want to, I still have hopes of, like, writing a few more, but I have, I don't know, like, 16 songs written. I want to get it down to, like, 10. And um, I just have to book the studio, and I'm in... I have to figure out, you know, just who is going to work on it and all those sorts of things. There's mm. different different ideas going on, but I'm excited. I hope <laughs> I hope I get in the studio soon. You sound excited, yeah. Uh, is Jill going to produce it again? She is, but um, we also I don't know if I should say this, but I will. There's also talk of um, Roger Mutno co-producing it, and I'm a big fan of his. Wow. He did like the Sleater, you know, Kenny Records and Yola Tango, so that might be really cool. And what about musically? Uh, have you got any thoughts there where it's going to be heading or be a similar, along similar lines to the first one? Um, I think it might be a bit, I, I think it might be a little bit more acoustic or, uh, generally be just because I think this last tour I did, I did played out so much without a band that I kind of wrote different kind of songs. Mm-hmm. You know, so. 
I think it might be a little different, but who knows, you know? <laughs> it's all so big to change. Now, you, you got distribution down here in Australia with, with the last uh, album. Who was that with and how did that one come about? Um, I got uh, help with two people. One was just half a cow, and yep. I know I just sort of emailed him because he's friends with um, one of my friends, uh, a band called Fuzzy, who I used to play out a lot with. And so I just emailed him and said, hey, would you want to take a few? And then the other uh, label that helped me out was Pure Pop. Mm-hmm. And I just emailed them, too, just sort of saying, hi, do you want to take a listen, see if you'd like to what a, send a few around. So I didn't really, because there wasn't any, you know, big, promotion behind it it was very you know sort of nice and i didn't i don't think anybody probably made much money you know from it. <laughs> <laughs> have they expressed expressed an interest in the next one as well i haven't talked to them about it but um when i get it recorded i'll definitely send some stuff around so i hope so i think that, that caught my attention you've had some songs covered in japan i believe yeah, <laughs> by this person who I guess is like a soap opera soap opera actress or TV actress and also a sort of pop star in the Britney Spears sense of the word. Mm-hmm. And uh, she did she recorded two of my songs, and it was it was cool to hear. It was very funny <laughs> in Japanese, I assume. In Japanese, and wow. it was um, I didn't. She didn't, I know, I, I only heard it after it was all done. Like, I didn't know she was going to do it or anything. And uh, so it was kind of a hoot. It was fun. <laughs> Talk about, about your songwriting. When do you know, or is there a time when you know that, that a song is just right, it's ready, it doesn't need any more any more tinkering? Um, I don't know. I think you just know, you know. It's kind of like, you're like, nah, that's not quite there. You know, like I have a couple songs. Um, on my next record that I think I have to go back into because I don't think that I don't buy it yet, you know? It's mm. like, yeah, that's got a, that's not right yet, you know? So you're a harsh critic of yourself? I'm sorry, what? Are you a harsh critic of, of yourself, of your own work? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I weren't. You know, I actually have complete envy of some of my friends who think they're great you know i'm like damn i wish i thought i were that great you know i mean it's just like it's like i I want some delusion you know yeah (laughs) (laughs) what what do you think is your best asset as as a writer um gosh um i can sometimes i can pen a catchy tune you know they're Mm kind of catchy yeah and um i i guess i also just sort of hope that they're kind of like um, everyday, sort of identifiable, you know, sort of like, I think that's what I try to write about. It's just sort of like everyday sort of things that uh, sort of everybody goes through and it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Now, what about your, your live band, Mary Kate? Is it pretty much the lineup that was on the album? Uh, no, my, uh, my live band is a band of friends who are actually in all other bands so it's kind of a rotating band uh sometimes they're there and sometimes they're on tour um the drummer is uh ira elliott he's a band called not a surf mm-hmm. and uh on bass i have uh my friend dave schumann and he plays in a band called the lilies and then uh, i try to recruit jill to play guitar and sing some harmonies and uh, another guy called Jim Boja, who's another songwriter. He's from Philadelphia. So he does harmonies and plays all sorts of instruments. So that's the live band. Fantastic. And what, what's the extent of, of your uh, your touring? Um, I toured for, I think, two months when the record came out around the United States, just the coast. I didn't get much in the middle. And then I got to go to France for, I think, like two weeks. That was really fun. And then just from then on, I've been doing just shows. You know, I didn't get on any tour or anything like that. Hmm. Would that be where your most interest has been outside of America, in France? I think so far, though. I guess it did pretty good in Japan um, as well, but I didn't get to go over and tour, which I would I would have liked to, hopefully next time. 
Well, we hope you can pencil in Australia while you're while you're at it. We're not too far from Japan. It's a little bit further on. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That would be great. Mary Kate, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on a, a fantastic start to your uh, solo career. Thank you very much. It's nice talking to you. And uh, we certainly look forward to uh, the follow-up. Let us know when it's uh, ready to get out there and we'll um, we'll add it onto our playlist as well. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Give our regards to Jill too. She's been a guest on my program in the past. and uh, I definitely will. Hello, we said hi. And hopefully okay. we'll see you down under real soon. Okay, great. Thanks, Bye-bye. Mary Kate. Take care.